Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like relationship, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. I don't know when you'll be listening to this episode, but the time that I am recording this episode It is actually the first week of July. And to be completely honest, in the past month, I've been so busy back to back working on weekdays and weekends. And I was traveling for a few weddings and stuff like that. So I did not realize that it was already the mid of the year until like last Friday when it's the 30th of June when it hit me like, damn, half of 2023 has just flew past and I just felt like I didn't have the time to sit down and properly review how the year has been for me. So I did that this past few days and I'm going to share with you a little bit more on that. So how I'm going to structure this episode is I'll be sharing with you how I did my mid-year review and how you can do it yourself, especially if you have not done a mid-year review before. And I have to say that Even though the title is called Meet Your Review, it doesn't mean that you have to do it in June or July. You can do it any time of the year. Time is just an illusion. It doesn't matter when you are going to start a goal and when you are doing a review and stuff like that. So if you are listening to this in August or April or March or any random time of the year, it is still okay to do a review if you feel like you needed it, okay? And then I'll be sharing with you the things that happened to me in this past six months and also the lessons that I've learned from it as well. So here's how I did my mid-year review. I personally like to go through as many documentation as possible that reminds me of what I have done in the past six months. I would go through the camera albums to see the photos and videos I've taken to remind me of the things that happened. I would also go through my Instagram story archive as well because I post a lot of my story. And I do that because I like to view back to see what has happened to me or perhaps what are the things that people has tagged me about. I've shared this before in a previous episode that I like to color code my Google Calendar events because it gives me an idea of the amount of time I spend on working versus the time that I spend seeing friends and family or maybe the time that I spend on my health activities like my workouts and all that. I actually track all of them. So I also like to kind of just skim through my Google Calendar to help me understand if this season was spent really balanced or if I was skewing towards working or slacking and it gives me an idea of how I spent my time in the past six months. Besides that, I also like to read through all the notes that I've taken in my notebook slash my journal and I also read through the reflection posts that I've written in my Notion document as well. So sometimes I like to write as I journal, but sometimes, especially for the long reflection post, I like to type it in my Notion because I know that I'll be typing a lot. And I know that sometimes my mind, it just goes in circles. So like I like to be able to adjust what I've written as well. So I like to go through the reflection post that I've written before including my year-end reflection from last year. So then I'm able to compare where I am now versus where I thought I would be. I also went through the goals that I set for myself earlier this year. And this year, in terms of my goal setting, I actually did it in a very simple way. So I grouped my goals into my lifetime goal. And then from there, I kind of figure out what is my one-year goal six months goals and then my three months goals as well. So I kind of listed it in that way. And lastly, I also kind of go through my vision board to kind of just get an idea of where I am versus where I envision myself to be. If I were to be in a season where I really care about a specific area of my life, for example, if one of my goals were to get super duper fit to have like a certain body fat percentage for example I would have also gone through my fitness app tracker and stuff like that to go through the numbers to review them 
but I am in a season where I am not too harsh on myself in terms of the numbers and goals. So for this season, I did not go through any of those numbers at all. After I've gone through all of these items that I shared with you, I would then, you know, spend a day or two just thinking about all these things that happen. And I would then sit down and write down what are the things that I have observed. I reflect on how I felt this season. What were the things that happened? Were there any things that I regretted or I hope could have been better? And of course, I celebrate all the milestones that I have achieved. And I note down on all the lessons that I learned as well. So this episode today, it's really about sharing with you all the things that happened and the things that I've learned in the past six months. So what has happened to me in the past six months? Number one, I turned 30 years old, which is something that I expected to happen. And I also went back into a full-time position in my current job. I will talk a bit more about this later. Next up, I also got engaged. So I didn't plan on this to be happened, even though I kind of expected that it might. I started my podcast I repositioned my social media branding from a video content coach to just being a content creator. And I also had my first family reunion for the first time in four years. And what I wanted to say is, guess what? I did not plan for any of this at the start of the year. So when I was doing my year-end reflection in 2022 and I was preparing for 2023, Except for the fact that I was turning 30, I did not expect for the rest of these things to happen. And that brings me to the first lesson that I learned from this mid-year review is that 90% of your plans are going to fail no matter what you do. So at the start of this year, I had four goals that I set for myself. And to be honest, I feel a little bit vulnerable sharing it with you right now. I don't think I have publicly shared my goals before because I like to keep it to myself so that I don't have the pressure of having other people keeping track of what I'm doing. But anyways, I want to share this with you because I want to share with you the lesson that I learned. The first goal that I had this year was to grow my coaching business to make additional income so that I can quit my job and become a full-time content creator. And guess what? Not only did I gone back to work full-time at my job, I also decided that I was going to quit coaching altogether. And this came after a huge realization that coaching was never what I wanted to do. And I realized that if I were to go coaching full-time and quit my job just to make the income for me to be a content creator, wouldn't I be building another hamster wheel for myself where I was just working and working and working on something that I wasn't truly passionate about just so I can do something that I want? Okay, it was something that I've kind of knew for a while then, but I didn't want to accept because I've been spending the last three years on building this coaching career and I didn't want to seem like a quitter. I didn't want people to feel like, oh, she's doing this again, like she started something and then she's quitting from it. There was a lot of things to consider. So yes, I quit coaching. I got back into a full-time job and that was not what I planned to do at all. (laughs) Secondly, one of my goals is by mid-year, which is literally now, I should have my media kit ready for sponsorship, having created a stable content system for myself in the first six months of this year. But what happened was I only started to have a clear direction of what I want to do with my social media in May which was just two months before the mid-year. It's not like I am totally off track for this goal. I just needed to move this deadline to a later date, whether it's Q4 or the end of this year. Thirdly, I set a goal to visit my best friend in Cologne. 
And having reviewed my finances, even though I saved up for the flight ticket to go there, I knew that even though I might be able to visit her and I would be having the time of my life over there, I also knew that I would be really stressed out financially after having visited her. I really wanted to YOLO on this, but I think as you turn 30, you just get a little bit more realistic with your time and money. And I decided to put this plan on hold. And I'm just very grateful that she understood where I was coming from. And it's not like we're not going to see each other anytime soon. We are going to see each other sometime soon this year. So next up, another goal that I also had was to complete my debt by the mid of this year so that I can start my wedding fund by the end of this year. And what happened was, yes, I am on track to reducing my debt, but it wasn't as optimistic as I expected it to be. I wasn't able to clear all of it. Um, it's not like it's very, very bad, but it's just moving a lot slower than I expected it to be. Having shared all of that with you, it is not like I completely failed every single goals that I set for myself. It is clear that I did move forward with my plan to be a full-time content creator. And I also did reduce my overall debt. It's just that things did not move the way that I expected it to be. And it also didn't move as quick as well. So even if 90% of the plans that I had did not go through, I am still very happy that I am not at where I used to be just six months ago. The second thing that I learned is to not let your ego get in the way of what you are meant to do. There were many things that I used to think are one way or another. So number one is I used to be so obsessed with becoming an entrepreneur because I thought that that was my only way to financial freedom. So I started villainizing a nine to five job. I felt like going full time means that I'm going backwards from moving towards my dream. And I remember crying so hard at the start of this year when I realized that I have to accept the offer to go back full-time in my current company. So what happened was last year, I actually took a pay cut to go part-time so that I can focus on my coaching business with the hopes that my coaching business is going to grow and my income will not be just a fixed salary, but something that is growable so that I can have more time to create content as a content creator at the site, Right? But what ended up happening in the past year was I just ended up being very stressed out financially every single month. And because of the stress, I wasn't able to create the content that I want. And when I accepted this full-time offer earlier this year, I cried so hard because I felt like I was going backwards. But as time passed, I learned to see things in a different perspective. And what I realized was that working a full-time job was actually a blessing that was able to buy me the financial security again so that I didn't have to stress about the money and I was able to create the content that I want. If I were to let my ego get in the way and to not take on that full-time job, I don't think that I would even be sitting here creating this podcast today because I would still be so stressed out with my own financial status. And the next thing is I did have to also cancel my trip to see my best friend, Vivian. It would have been really cool for me to be able to travel across the globe to spend time and have the memories of a lifetime with my best friend. It would have looked good on social media. It would have been great content for myself. I would have been a great friend to be able to do all of this. My ego would have approved all of these things. But the truth is, if I cannot afford to do something, I shouldn't be doing it. I decided that I had some growing up to do and to put the money towards clearing my debt so that I can focus more on my long-term goals sooner. And because Vivian was someone that really knew who I am and what I was going through, and because she cared for me and she wants the best for me, 
she was so understanding with everything as well. Next up, the third thing that I learned is to really trust your intuition. With the content that I'm creating today here at Small Girl Big Talk, it is so different from what I thought I needed to do to be successful as a content creator or as an entrepreneur. I've decided that instead of focusing on metrics or proven strategies, I was going to follow my heart to create this space because I knew that the world needs more personal stories like mine to create this safe space for us to grow up together. And I decided to embrace my femininity, to talk about all this emotional and vulnerable stuff, which I know is irreplaceable by AI because of the human touch that I have in all this content that I created. Like, I know that it is going to be a long haul. Like, it's going to take time until I build that community so that I'm able to get monetized. But my heart has always felt very at peace with the content that I've been putting out in these past two months. And I really get very excited when I see people sharing about my posts or commenting on the posts that I've created. And I wouldn't have gotten to where I am right now if I were to stick to what I learned. Instead of focusing on masculine work, like setting goals, focusing on the metrics or the strategies or moving forward, I want to encourage you to embrace your feminine strength, to lean into your intuition, to go with the flow, to embrace your tendency to be more nurturing and compassionate. These used to be characters that I thought were weaknesses for us ladies, but I realized that these were why we were created as women, this were our strength, then I really want to encourage you to trust your intuition and to do the things your way instead of how it's supposed to be. And finally, I've learned to be gentle with myself. I've shared this before, that I was always very harsh on myself and I was always guilty for so many things. I was guilty for not making enough, not being a good Christian, not working out, not eating well. There's always a lot of judgment for myself. And I decided that it's time to let go of this judgment and to just be gentle on myself. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing as well. To let go of the judgment that you may have for yourself and to just go with the flow to treat yourself the way you would have treated your best friends or your child, with gentleness and with kindness. And if you fail, it's completely all right. Just laugh about it or cry about it if you need to, but rise up and keep moving forward after that. Because life is too short for us to be obsessed with all the mistakes that we might or might not even make. So just be gentle with yourself. I started doing that this season or maybe even last year. And I felt like I just became a lot more lighter and happier on the inside. So yeah, that's all that happened to me in this past six months and the lessons that I learned. To be honest, 2023 so far was just unexpected for myself. In a way... I feel like I became a lot more at peace with who I am and where I am in my life right now. In the journal entry that I wrote for this mid-year review, I wrote that I felt like I toned down on the numbers and became less ambitious. And I honestly did not view this as a negative thing. I really think that it is a very good thing that happened to me because I no longer let money and my career control my life. Instead, I'm starting to take control of money. I'm starting to take control of my career, which brings me a lot more joy and happiness with where I am right now. Six months is enough for a lot of things to change for you. So it's honestly not too late for you to make 2023 the year that everything changed for you. And I want to encourage you to work on a plan, to envision the life that you want, 
to set some milestone goals that will move you towards that. And sure, 90% of the plan that you make might not even make it, but then it is still going to push you forward to help you figure out what were the right things that you need to do to get to where you want. So that's all that I have for you in this episode. If you enjoyed listening to this, do give it a 5-star rating on Spotify or give it a thumbs up on YouTube or share it with your friend on your Insta stories so that more people can benefit from the content that I am sharing. I hope to see you in my next one and goodbye! (laughs) Bye-bye!